Elon Musk's Mars dream is now more distant than ever. Following a string of recent issues with Starship, many experts in the industry believe the current version still falls short of what's needed for a high-risk six-month mission to Mars. And even if Musk's vehicle is eventually perfected, the broader plan still faces major technical hurdles that cast serious doubt on its chances of success. But now, a bold new approach is taking shape, one still centered on SpaceX's greatest ship, but this time featuring a smaller, more agile variant known as the Mini Starship. It's quickly becoming the most realistic solution humanity has ever had for getting to the Red Planet. So, what exactly is the Mini Starship? And how could it finally unlock a path to sending humans to Mars? Let's break it all down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Every time we explore the vast, mysterious universe through what we know so far, there's this one feeling that keeps coming back. The sense that we, humans, are incredibly small in the grand scheme of things. Take the journey to Mars, for example. Traveling across 225 million kilometers just to reach the red planet. That's only about 1.9% of the solar system's diameter. If we measure all the way out to Pluto, around 11.8 billion kilometers. Well, even that small fraction of distance poses an unbelievable challenge for humankind. Still, Elon Musk holds on to an incredibly bold dream that one day, humans will set foot on Mars. SpaceX, the company he founded, exists for that very purpose, to turn what many believe is impossible into reality. According to SpaceX's Mars plan, the upper stage of Starship will be refueled in Earth orbit before beginning its long journey to the Red Planet. But relying solely on Starship for a full round trip? That's an insanely ambitious move, especially when no human has ever set foot on Mars before. According to experts, Musk's plan still carries a lot of risk. One of the biggest challenges is fuel. Even if Starship is refueled in Earth orbit, the journey to Mars requires an enormous amount of propellant. Sure, the Raptor engines won't be firing the entire way, but we're still talking about a distance of over 200 million kilometers. And when the ship gets there, Mars has a much thinner atmosphere than Earth, meaning it can't provide enough aerodynamic drag to slow the spacecraft down during landing. That forces Starship to rely on its own engines to decelerate, burning precious fuel to perform a safe, controlled touchdown. As a result, by the time it reaches the Martian surface, Starship will be almost out of fuel. So how do the astronauts get back to Earth? That's when in-situ fuel production becomes critical. They'll need to produce liquid methane and liquid oxygen directly on Mars, using local resources and technology that NASA is still actively developing today. According to Dr. Robert Zubrin, an American aerospace engineer and the man who originally inspired Elon Musk's Mars dream, using a massive vehicle like Starship for a round trip to Mars may not be realistic. Starship, without fuel, weighs about 235 tons. And based on Zubrin's estimates, it would need around 580 tons of liquid oxygen and methane just to travel from low Earth orbit to Mars. Now, Starship can technically hold up to 1,200 tons of propellant, but most of that is already used just to reach orbit. So, to fully refuel the 580 tons needed for the Mars transfer, you'd need five additional tanker launches, six launches in total, just for one mission. The return trip is even more difficult. After unloading cargo, Starship's dry mass drops to about 115 tons, but it would still require 600 tons of fuel to lift off from Mars and make it back to Earth. Producing that much liquid methane and liquid oxygen on Mars is an incredibly complex and time-consuming process. It would rely on CO2 from the Martian atmosphere and water, using chemical systems based on the Sabatier reaction. To generate 600 tons of propellant, Zubrin estimates it would take up to 500 days, assuming everything runs smoothly. And that's not all. The process would also require a nuclear power plant, capable of delivering a steady 600 kilowatts of continuous power, enough to supply electricity for around 40 homes for a whole day. That alone is a major technical challenge. In fact, Russia and China are already teaming up to tackle this exact problem. Zubrin argues that with all these demands, Starship may not be the best solution for a human mission to Mars. That's why doctors. Zubrin proposed a smarter, more efficient alternative, one that has gained support from many experts in the space community. 
It's called the Mini Starship, and it's at the heart of his updated plan, Mars Direct 2. In an interview, Dr. Zubrin said, There's a lot to admire about SpaceX's Mars mission plan. In fact, its starting point is my own Mars Direct concept. Before we dive into his Mars Direct, let's first take a closer look at what the Mini Starship actually is, and how it fits into the bigger picture of the Mars mission plan. Well, it's a smaller, more efficient spacecraft designed by Dr. Zubrin, a scaled-down version of Starship, built specifically to travel from Earth orbit to Mars and land on the surface of the Red Planet. Here's how the plan works. The full-size Starship launches the Mini Starship into a high Earth orbit, close to escape velocity. From there, the Mini Starship continues the journey to Mars on its own, while the main Starship returns to Earth, refuels, and gets ready to deliver another mini starship, like a cosmic shuttle bus. Compared to the full starship, the mini version uses five times less fuel, yet can still carry about one-third of the payload or crew, enough for early exploration missions, and more importantly, it needs far less fuel for the return trip, which dramatically reduces the burden of producing fuel on Mars. According to Dr. Zubrin, this approach allows SpaceX to reuse starships more frequently, without leaving them stranded on Mars for hundreds of days. That means faster turnaround and more missions in a shorter time. Sure, it won't carry 100 people like Elon Musk's original vision, but for the very first missions, that scale isn't needed. After all, finding 100 volunteers willing to leave Earth and head for a completely unexplored world, that might be a bigger challenge than the rocket itself. So, here's a fun question. If SpaceX opened up applications for volunteers to go to Mars with full support and benefits, would you go? If your answer is yes, type 1 in the comments or share your thoughts below. Alright, now let's dig a little deeper into the plan. Of course this mini Starship can't carry as much cargo as the full-size version, but the difference isn't as big as you might think. Here's why. If a regular Starship can deliver the mini version into space, that smaller vehicle would only need about 33 tons out of its 100-ton mass to make the journey to Mars, assuming its dry mass is around 20 tons. We're talking about 50 tons of cargo, delivered by a spacecraft that's much smaller than the original Starship. This plan allows a small crew, maybe around 10 people, to land, plant a flag, carry out scientific experiments, and dig up lots of Martian soil and rocks to bring back to Earth. They had also set up a small nuclear power station to support operations on a planet that's anything but friendly. Mars is known for its harsh environment. Dust storms happen often, especially in the southern hemisphere during spring and summer when the planet gets more sunlight. And then there are the infamous global dust storms, massive events that can blanket the entire planet. These usually occur every 5 to 10 Earth years. One of the most dramatic examples happened in 2018, when a global storm completely covered Mars and ultimately ended NASA's Opportunity rover mission due to lack of sunlight. That's why relying solely on solar panels isn't ideal. A nuclear power source is far more reliable, though ideally you'd want to use both, unless something goes wrong. After surviving for about six months to a year, the crew would begin the journey back, and because this mini starship only needs one-sixth the fuel of the full-sized version, a slightly larger mini starship could pull it off with much better margins, making the return trip far more realistic. And when it's time to come home, the 20-ton starship would only need two engines, one vacuum raptor and one sea-level raptor. The remaining 12 tons could be reserved for crew quarters, a much smaller payload that demands far less fuel, making the whole mission dramatically more achievable. Since going public, Mars Direct 2 has gained strong support across the space community. One of its biggest advocates is Miguel Hera, a bright student from Spain who expanded on the concept and introduced a safer, more refined version, Mars Direct 3. According to the Mars Direct 3.0 plan, four spacecraft are involved in the mission, and remarkably, even if three out of the four were to fail, the crew could still survive. Let me explain how that works. It all starts with the first two ships. These are an uncrewed, full-sized starship called A, and a mini starship known as Mini A. Both arrive during the first launch window. A is the main fuel production unit. It's equipped with CO2 collectors, water, and CO2 electrolysis systems, solar-powered rovers, a Sabatier reactor, 
and hydrogen tanks. If water extraction from the Martian surface isn't possible, it can still produce fuel by combining CO2 from the atmosphere with stored hydrogen, enough to safely send Mini-A back to Earth. Solar panels provide the power, no matter which process is used. Although Mini-A is uncrewed during its journey to Mars, it will be fully equipped for human habitation. On board, it carries life support systems, enough food and supplies for two years, water and waste recycling systems, spacious living quarters, and all the essential amenities astronauts would need. It will also include two backup carbon dioxide electrolysis units for oxygen production, as well as a rover for surface exploration. About two years later, when the next launch window opens, assuming everything goes as planned, Mini-B arrives, the first crewed spacecraft. It brings the astronauts who begin scientific work, plant a flag, and most importantly, deploy a fuel transport rover. That rover transfers fuel from A to both Mini-B and Mini-A, just in case it's needed. Finally, the last ship to arrive is B, a full-sized cargo starship. It delivers ice mining equipment, a large pressurized rover for long-range exploration, and the early components of a long-term habitat. If everything works, this setup could allow the crew to travel hundreds of kilometers from the landing site and extend their stay on Mars significantly. After that, we could start sending additional starships to deliver hundreds of tons of cargo needed to build a full-scale Mars base and do it much faster. Thanks to having up to four rapidly reusable launch pads that don't require maintenance between launches, these starships could lift off just hours apart. This might be the most effective way to quickly establish a permanent human presence on Mars. But regardless, if our goal is to establish the beginnings of a long-term colony on Mars, a successful first step in exploring the Red Planet with minimal risk to human life, then Mars Direct 3.0 is without a doubt one of the best solutions we have.